Hey everybody, welcome to the program. We decided to just go because Katie's always nervous about podcasting, but we never really shut the fuck up around the house anyway, so we just decided to do something new and rather than do a whole bunch of prep, we just decided we're eating, we're eating lunch right now, and we just uh, decided to uh, jump right in. Indeed we did. Hello, Charlie. Ind indeed we... <laughs> Hello. This is my <laughs> podcast voice. Camera. Camera. Am I saying that weird? <laughs> what were we just talking about before I hit record? So we were literally just talking about... So Charlie was laughing at me because I dropped the mic in between the couch cushions. And um, as it turns out, I really like to um, nest. Or build a, you or said build build a little, little fort, fort when I'm in, in a couch. And so... This week, I have realized that the dangers of that are a broken phone and many lost lighters. Well, a broken screen on your phone. Your phone still works. That's true. The phone itself. <laughs> Count However, your blessings. However, um, yeah, and so we were just laughing about it because that is very real for me. And I was saying that when I was younger and, uh, and I was first starting to drive, well, not first starting to drive, although I started late, I think I got my license when I was around 17 or something like that. I like, guess that's late for out here, but I'm from New York, so I didn't get my license until I was oh, like almost you, were, you had your walking license. You had your license to <laughs> To walk to and subway. take the subway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> license to, to subway from the government of the United States. Exactly. Like, the, <laughs> never mind. Almost. <laughs> almost. Uh, so when I, when I used to drive, when I was younger, I used to have like my phone and a lighter and a pen and a, a piece, a little piece of paper for notes and stuff like that. And I would just drive around either like taking calls or like, you know, writing notes down for the next, the next big project, bro. <laughs> it was never anything great. Like, don't forget to pick up your dry cleaning. It was never anything useful. It was always like. Star killer across the universe, half alligator man, shark guy. <laughs> yeah, but that sounds wildly more exciting than picking up your laundry. Speaking of which, uh, talking about personal uh, growth, what is it called? Self care. Mm, when, when, indeed, self care. When people give advice for free, or I mean, for, when people give like free advice about how to better your life, isn't that self care? Um, or not totally, but. Continue speaking. <laughs> Define it, please. Well, I can you use it I, in a sentence? I have decided that Sundays are laundry days. <laughs> That's true. So Charlie has been exceptional this weekend. He and uh, Michael Hawkins and Terrence, Terry Bob, Bobby Bobs, Boberts, <laughs> Mick Bob. Roberts, Roberts uh, played last night at the Armadillo Ranch. Um, Formerly the Ancient Mariner, I've been told, which is cool. Um, I did actually look over at the bar last night, and above the bar are, like, red glowing glass tiles that are, like, a captain's hook and, a spit, like, a little sail for, like, a sailing sailboat, things like that. And uh, that looked cool. I, f I think that might have been part of the Ancient Mariner 2.0 uh, oh. decorum. Because okay. it was... So originally it was the Ancient Mariner, and it was like you walked in there, and it looked like a pirate ship. Oh, uh, that sounds awesome! It it was mostly awesome, and until it wasn't awesome. Got it. Um, but you know there was like wooden carved wooden mermaids on the ceiling, and Ooh. like lots of rope, and and like wheels everywhere and stuff like sounds that. Sounds sexy. Mermaids and rope. Mermaids, <laughs> rope, and wheels. It makes me want to go fishing. <laughs> it makes me want to do all sorts of things that fishing was not anywhere near them. I just think about fishing a lot because uh, I can't eat fish. And so I just want to, like, fish them and then... And then just, like, kiss them on the lips and, then and return, send them, <laughs> return send them, them to back. Wednesday game. Um, I understand, yeah. You're like, you're a heck of a fish, fella. And just <laughs> drop them back in the water. You're like, you look delicious. <laughs> I would eat you I and your family. I would eat you if you didn't make my feet explode. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Charlie, Charlie has gout. Um, which, they know. You know <laughs> they if, know. If anybody's heard any any, any of, of the, the podcasts, podcasts I, I must have. Um, well, at least you know, I am. I assume there are millions of people listening to this, and so for those who don't Fingers know, crossed. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've got the I've got my own shit on loop on YouTube, <laughs> trying to That's get more hits it. on the daily. <laughs> um, gout is inflammation, right? Basically, yeah. yeah. It's 
it's the crystallization of the uric acid in your body caused by the purines in rich food. Say basically. that five times fast. Ho! There you go. <laughs> you dirty girl. <laughs> Where's my drum set? Um, so Charlie has not only been dealing with taking care of inflammation and like just taking care of stress in his body, playing shows, but also doing all the laundry, which is exceptional. And so at some point, I guess the, the deal is that I fold the laundry yeah, and I will you, slowly you work on it. <laughs> you wash faster than I fold though. So we'll see. We'll it see. takes 90 minutes. <laughs> Each laundry cycle takes at least 90 minutes because I'm running a 90 minute dryer cycle and then like a 40 to 50 minute washing cycle. And you're like, it takes forever to fold. <laughs> Rude. <laughs> That's true. I mean, I'm just like very busy. I have like a lot of other things going on. You you do. You got your keys to your office space. I Can do. We, are we allowed to talk about that? Yeah, that... I, do, I do. I mean, for those who don't know, um, again, for the millions and millions of listeners. Fingers um, crossed. Uh, <laughs> fingers and toes. <laughs> I ah. can't cross my left toes right now, but I can cross my right toes. Got it. Um, yeah, I did. I, I have an office space. I am a therapist and Weaving Roots Therapy, a uh, little self-plug, uh, look it up online, um, sex therapist extraordinaire. And uh, yeah, I got a new office space. Pretty excited. So that's that's the that's the moves. That's the moves we've been making. So when I first heard you were a sex therapist, that was that was like a major eye roll for me. So uh, explain <laughs> love me, don't you? I, I do love you. I also feel like I just heard like a you know, like collective eye roll of like, oh brother. So Well, why don't you explain to the folks at home who don't know what a sex, what a therapist. sex therapist is? Because I just thought it was like you sit around and like read Fifty Shades of Grey and like jerk off a whole bunch or, you know, whatever the I mean, feminine not equivalent professionally, of <laughs> just, you know, for funsies. You got something on your chin. Thank you. I got it. Flick it <laughs> flicking the bean is one of the ways we, we like to refer flick, to it. Flicking the bean. <laughs> yeah. that, sound, that sounds like a, that sounds like something that we, that sounds like a game that we would have invented in Arizona. When yeah, I we, we did invent it. It was called well, no, masturbating. No, but it, like it, <laughs> you know what I mean? It was like, I do. There's also double clicking the mouse oh that's, that's retarded. For the, <laughs> that's for the younger kids that's, um so they, basically they, dude i how many kids do you think know what a mouse is do you think they still animal have, or computer either uh, either yeah, not <laughs> neither well how many uh how many kids do you think know what a like a, a mouse is like a like for like your an computer, actual mouse I like mean, separate from your thing i I think maybe if you're over 10, you do because lots of adults or like doctor's offices kind of still use them, but maybe not. Everything's going to be touch screen. Everything's touch screen. Like so anyway, before we go before there. we go there, um, I am a sex therapist, which means I personally, I'm a clinical social worker. I'm an independently licensed social worker, and I went to graduate school for human sexuality. So basically, I get to do therapy with all sorts of folks around all sorts of stuff, sexuality. That's the short answer. Long answer, you can look me up online at weavingrootstherapy.com. And how um, do you spell weaving root? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> speak slowly. Um, yeah, it's awesome. I love it. Um, I'm very honored and privileged to work with the people I do. And I'm very honored and privileged to be on your podcast where I can be the goof that I am. <laughs> So you slipped into podcast voice again. <laughs> Which one's that? Ah, oh, camera. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. I'm working on it. It's hard to have a microphone in your face and not want to, you know, get a little Madonna mid-90s do you, on you. Do you want a reheated uh, chicken McNugget or some... Uh, Re some 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 re-cheesed fries, fries reheated and, and freshly cheesed fries from last night. I'm actually I think I'm okay for the second. You, Although I did lovingly pick the jalapenos out of our leftovers for you. The jalapenos. Why am I even surprised about the jalapenos anymore? <laughs> <laughs> Remember when we got that chocolate jalapeno? <laughs> so this is a story of betrayal and heartbreak. Um 
we were just walking through the mall one day as you know normal folks do and uh, you know just get our mall walk on and we passed by a chocolate store and it said free samples and so as far as i'm concerned that's like you know oh my god i found a present like free <clears throat> samples <laughs> Charlie literally choked on how excited he was. Mm. Free samples. Uh. Um, and uh, so I went into the chocolate store and grabbed something, put it in my mouth, and it was a chocolate covered spicier than you jalapeno. It was. it was the it was so jalapeno, rude. Can they justify that? It was so rude. It was so hurtful. Um, I was <laughs> upset. I was angry. I was sweaty. <laughs> I was very spicy you and were all sorts of jalapenoed <laughs> i was i was feeling all jalapenoed it was rough it was a rough time rougher than just like you know <laughs> experiences in the mall in general <laughs> well we were at the south mall which no i'm just kidding it's not that bad it's just uh you know it depends on where you live in the city everybody wants to have their own version of the east coast west coast mid 90s uh hip-hop thing so if you live on the north side you think that the chapel hills mall is the bomb and if you live on the south side you think that the citadel mall is the bomb well that makes and sense they both kind of suck <laughs> i mean it makes sense also that's pretty much what the you know west coast east coast rap battles were really about was, shopping you know, malls yeah i mean listen you you gotta establish your territory well i mean they they wore a lot of jewelry you think they went to the mall to get their jewelry <laughs> definitely they went to those little kiosks that were just like copper sprayed with gold paint no no, no that they, shit they, was went to the, they went to the real the real deal katie they, katie and i actually earlier this is this is funny for for the millions of people uh listening <laughs> fingers crossed <laughs> so Kate, katie and i at at this point you know we haven't pissed each other off completely yet but at this point and for the foreseeable future we would like to get married well not for the foreseeable future because if we do actually get married at one point then then wanting to get married for the foreseeable future we only work. want to get married for one little bit of time and then, we and wanna... then we'll see what happens <laughs> <laughs> but we decided that katie is jewish and i was uh raised catholic and then christian and then uh, nothing is where I'm at <laughs> right now. <laughs> um, but we decided it would be funny if we got married by a priest and a rabbi, and it would it would be the invitations would say a priest and a rabbi walk into Katie and Charlie's uh, wedding, or Kate walk into the Milo's wedding, or something like that. Um, but we were talking about instead of sh exchanging. Um, dumb rings that would get in the way of your bass playing we we would exchange uh gold dookie necklaces and for those of you that don't know what dookie is get your minds out of the gutter it's it has nothing to do with poops Poops. or turds or turds <laughs> duties if you will what's uh what's a dookie you're from new york you you probably saw more dookies in your lifetime than i have Listen, I, I could tell you a thing or two about, about dookies. some dookies. <laughs> I mean, it's basically like the necklaces that we all wish we had. It's just a giant gold rope. Like it looks it's like, like a ro big gold rope. It's it's like sort of like the rope you climbed in gin in gin in gym class. God damn! <laughs> <laughs> so excited about but all it, the dookie. But it's around your neck. So yeah. If you got a dookie around your neck, you you know you were you, you know, were styling. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so real. They always looked so heavy, but I did want one. And you know what? Since we are sort of a non-traditional couple, if you will, you know, with our living together in sin and whatnot, <laughs> <laughs> um, I love the idea of like big gold necklaces, you know. So I remember, I can't remember if it was uh, the Art of Storytelling music video or if it was the, um, oh, what was that Slick Rick song? Um without casts the one where he picks himself up from prison and he like takes himself shopping and like freshens himself up and uh -huh. stuff like that have you seen that i haven't actually well there's a scene where he's you know he's he looks sort of like slick rick like you and i remember him um and, and he takes off he, they go to the jeweler and they take off all his gold and they put it on the thing and he pushes it towards the the, the jeweler and she uh, exchanges it with a bunch of like thinner looking like platinum stuff. And I just remember thinking like, 
It's a goddamn shame. <laughs> I hear that. Remember, well, you remember the like the the last little bit of the '90s and the early 2000s. Everybody was, you know, platinum plaques, and you know. Oh that. yeah. Well, I even remember hearing about like Jacob the jeweler, who I think was like the some grill. big. Was that the grill guy? He was the guy who I think made those like big like sparkly diamond jesus's for kanye oh. like you remember those like you know they, like well, I, I think I that that's who he was he might have been making some of those grills I, i'm sure he did but like those things were like immaculate serious. yeah, yeah. Well, i remember paul wall's like whole entire rap career was basically <laughs> like <laughs> was basically there so that he could sell people grills oh my god what do you think paul wall is doing right now selling people dope ass <laughs> fucking <Yes>. grills <laughs> get it paul wall paul wall and brooke hogan oh what a match made in heaven oh, are, are they together no don't you remember when they made a music video no i sure Called don't they don't know about us the last Paul Wall music video I saw. I was still in high school, and it was for Grills with uh, Nelly and uh, the guy, the guy who did the last verse on there that I don't remember. The, well, that sounds much better. He did the got a bill in my mouth like I'm Hillary Rodham, which I remember. I heard that and I was like, that doesn't happen. In there. That doesn't happen with the Clintons. <laughs> <laughs> they pro <laughs> they Nobody's probably, having blowjobs. They probably like sleep on like they bill probably sleeps on the yacht he probably has the whole yacht to himself you know one of the yachts and, and she just stays in the in the suite or whatever the fuck she they live in or i think they have so many properties that you know they could probably be they probably have big enough properties that they could be in the same space and not even know you know mm -hmm. that like one's just like in the east wing yeah and one's in like the west wing and you know that's the life that I hope we never live. I want to be in a. I always want to be in a house that's so small with you that like we have to be touching even if we don't want to be. <laughs> or or when I say things like you've got to speak louder if you want to shout across the house, dear. That's exactly true. <laughs> <laughs> We're excellent Can't at hear being you old. Downstairs. <laughs> We sure are. It's like, oh god, this inflammation and my my ears are well, ringing. You know what's so crazy is um, when I was when I was younger and I would hear like older musicians sort of talk about you know bu fucking bullshit. They they would always eventually or inevitably bring up the um, oh I got them stiff joints. Oh you know I gotta warm heat up them joints. You know warm up and stuff like that. And I remember for the longest time I was able to not warm up. Like I could just like jump in you know? yeah and it would just be like no problem and and now um we like we start playing a gig and i'm like let's uh ease on into this first set here especially when we're playing four hour shows you know like you know i always compare myself to the the you know the big famous jam band guys and they're only playing well I mean, they're they're playing i think they're the typical jam band setup is like an hour and 15 for a set and then like an hour an hour and 20 for the second set plus like usually like, like a, a 15 minute encore or something like that okay and so that's like two like two and a half hour you know something like that yeah and you guys are generally playing about four hours oh i've been, I've been playing four hour gigs since i was 18 years old like on the regular and so i just i the few times that we have been privileged to play like opening sets for for famous folks that have come through town and stuff like that i get to the end of like these 45 minute to hour long sets and i'm just like <sighs> you know <laughs> i'm just like so jacked and like ready to go and i'm like i just gotta go like kick stuff for three hours you know <laughs> yeah i mean it's amazing and that's not even to mention all of the like setup and take down and everything that it takes so oh doing your own gear and stuff for yeah. sure but i get it it's also you know it's a whole energy rush when you're playing and so i'm sure if you're playing for 45 minutes you get off stage and you're like i'm ready to fucking do something yeah. <laughs> let's make <laughs> something happen yeah that's the truth well we I, we almost stalled there so let's look at the board <laughs> what do we got on the board we we ended right around here and then we zipped up over here um, okay. For so, those of you at home, uh, Charlie's pointing to a beautiful whiteboard that says program notes. Program notes. Um, so the ancient mariner going into the armadillo ranch. I love the, excuse me. I love ooh, the, uh, bring it up again and we'll vote on it. Oh, oh, hello. I love the orange, 
uh, building. I didn't know armadillos were orange, so that's that was a, a cool hmm. bit of knowledge to find out. That makes sense. I guess I thought that they were like brown and they're orange. They're not. They're not orange. I think I think the people that painted it uh, orange just wanted a, like a, a nice bright building or something like that. Ah. I also like the giant fork with the macaronis on it out front. That's pimping. There are there are macaronis on a fork outside. That's true. I was surprised to see that Maryland's pizza. Which has been a staple since I was since I first moved to Colorado when I was ten, so it's been there for twenty two years. Is that the is that the right math? Oh I believe God. so. Yeah, math is just the worst for me. <laughs> What's that noise? I don't know. What is that? Is that a dog like snoring? I think that's a dog snoring. Okay. I think that may have been We Joey. might have <laughs> thought that we were getting haunted or something for just a moment, but... This house is haunted. I have heard the toilet flush several times. Like, this... if I'm downstairs, I'll hear the upstairs toilet flush, know, and I'll I hear the... I don't like it. I, I don't mind it. But, I... like, I heard something in the closet the other day, and, like, Joey came in. Joey, one of the little pups, came in to see what was happening, and I was like, um... Joey, that is that you that, in the closet? Like, that joke you know. we used to tell as school children that I've got you where I want you and now I'm going to eat you. <laughs> I don't know that oh one, bro. God, this is one of the worst jokes on the. In, well, in the we, all, we all need to hear it. <clears throat> God, I don't even know how it, how it go. I'll, I'll see if I can remember it. So there's a a couple. Their car breaks down. They got to rent uh, a room at the haunted motel in the rain on the side of the road. And so they go up Naturally. to they go up and ring the doorbell and and or they go up to ring the uh, service bell at the front. And um, when they ring the service bell, instead of it going ding, it goes. Yikes. And, and nobody comes out so they ring the uh they ring the bell again and it goes and then there's a creaking sound coming from the back and then there's a loud <laughs> and then there's a and then you go, hold on, hold on, don't get your, don't get your panties in a twist. <laughs> and then the shortest, most Jewish Frankenstein you've ever seen in your life hobbles on up to, it looks like Katie, but a Frankenstein and, and, with, and without boobs, hobbles up to the counter and goes, all right, all right, do you want the room? You want, <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> and they say, well, our car's broken down, so I was wondering if we could use your phone to call the, the tow person and get our car towed to the mechanic and we assume that they won't be able to get it until you know some other time is now so that sure. we have to get a room and so these people go upstairs and they uh they they try to go to sleep and they say um they hear like a, a loud like thumping noise um and he go uh and and they hear like this whispering and it goes And, uh, this is creepy as goes, fuck. The, the 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 male part of the couple says, "Honey, did you uh, happen to hear anything?" And the female part of the couple goes, "Why? No, no, I didn't. Now try to go to sleep. We've got to get to the tow truck in the morning." <laughs> it's basically like <laughs> masterpiece theater. <laughs> Continue. And so they try to go to sleep again. They hear a loud thumping, and um. They, they hear the thumping is even louder and it's like thump, 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 thump and they hear, I've got you where I want you and now I'm going to eat you and then the guy says honey, you must have heard that and she goes, I think I did I think I heard it from the closet over there <laughs> And so the guy gets up and he puts on his robe and slippers and he gets his double barrel shotgun that is hanging above the the headrest of the uh, or the headboard of the bed in the in the hotel for you know haunt and, and yeah it's, naturally it says break glass in case of uh, creepy haunted shit and use these ghost bullets to mm -hmm. Van Helsing the fuck out of that that's shit. That's like a pretty common thing in hotels. It's yeah. like Bibles. <laughs> <laughs> But you wouldn't know anything about that because you killed Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Me personally, that's that's yeah. true. I did. 
So <laughs> my bad. I love my Christ killer. I right know. I love you too. And so the guy follows the thumping sound, and he opens the uh, the door to the closet, and there's a monkey in there with a little Abu thing and a vest. And he's he's flicking his boogers <laughs> at the side of the closet so hard that it's causing the thumping noises. So he's going, I've got you where I want you, and now I'm gonna eat you. <laughs> wow, what a journey you just took us all on. Well, the and it ended line, with a booger eater, the a booger is, eating monkey. The punchline is so crummy. You've got to dousey up the uh, the journey, <laughs> the setup. <laughs> It's almost like the aristocrats, you know, if, if you just tell the aristocrats, like the, without any embellishment, it just becomes like, you know, you, it's almost like a, a test to see if somebody's mentally handicapped or not. <laughs> like, I got it going. <laughs> Those excellent, excellent jokes, my love. Thanks. Should probably, I mean, we should try and go on the road with this, I think. I've always thought so. <laughs> <laughs> we certainly enjoy ourselves. Um, well, I think, you know, that's interesting to think about, uh, you know, career changes, things moving. I mean, we did mention, of course, that last night was just Charlie, T-Bob's, and Michael Hawkins. DJ um, Mikey. DJ Mike's. Dude, he was DJ Mikey last night. He was twisting knobs and pushing he buttons He was doing amazing. Shit. And so it's really cool, you know, for everybody out there to take a look because uh, CMB, Charlie Milo Band, is in a new new era of revolution. We're we're super excited. We we lost our guitar player, and I'm not sure if we're ready to talk about it yet. Um, Fair. And at least in public, Katie and I have talked about the shit in private. Way too much. Know, Perhaps once you know all the. <laughs> The potential legal shit dies once down. All the, once all the fuckheads are, are yeah. have been silent for a total of like a month. Yeah, maybe we, we will can share. Talk about but <laughs> needless to say. But we're still getting messages from fuckheads, so we yeah, got to not so talk about it so needless to say, so we are going to keep moving forward. But um, last night was sick. And part of what was so amazing was that it was like. No attitude guitar. <laughs> no attitude guitar. Um, no bullshit. Um, and. There was like some real, real funky sound happening. Well, Michael brought his laptop. You know, he 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 brought it out at, at uh, Mother Muffs last weekend a little bit, and kind of played a little bit. But I, I think this was our first. This was our first uh, gig with sort of the mentality that we're going to be doing like a uh, sort of like a piano rock slash up into club techno laser you know fire the lasers sound yeah. thing you know and what's so crazy is that michael can i mean midi controllers are so fantastic now and sound design is is you know well i mean any new technology is is beyond where the old technology was but literally we're living in an era where michael can just play the fucking guitar on, on his, his keyboards keyboard. and people don't give a shit about authenticity anymore which you know uh, well you know what i mean i do sense when I, I do say that? i hear what you're saying it's i mean it's not necessarily about having a, a guitar player for the sake of having a guitar player like if we if we if we went into i don't know like if we went into some kind of island thing and michael started playing the steel pans on his keyboard i don't think anybody in the bar would be like hey man that's fucking cheating bro you know <laughs> which i i think the steel pan shit would be fantastic well he did have some amazing dulcimer sound oh the are things we, happening on at practice we we were jamming in uh c friggy c minor but specifically c phrygian which has this sort of bam blam meow, meow, you know <laughs> it's got the, that flat too that makes it sound like egyptian or jewish sometimes um but it uh he we were jamming in, in that so for those of you that are familiar you can kind of imagine what a phrygian jam with a hammer dulcimer would sound like and for those of you that aren't familiar it just sounded like mystical breakbeat techno yeah, it was just, <laughs> it's just pretty exciting to see what what can happen when energy moves and flows and also <laughs> what happens when you have a little bit more time and space to focus on the things that matter to you like you know movies such as super troopers one and two iron man and 
our personal favorite and really a film that I think has defined a lot of people's lives <laughs> about growing up, grief, loss, family, sexuality, um, really just making and Cracker choices. Jacks. And Cracker Jacks. Rookie, Rookie of, of the, the year. year. <laughs> so, you know, obviously we would like to send out the invitation, which we will do every week for the rest of our lives, to the star of Rookie of the Year. <laughs> um, Jack Bradfield. <laughs> 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 Jack Bradfield, <laughs> the worst villain I've ever met. No, if anybody from uh, Rookie of the Year would like to come on our podcast, <laughs> <laughs> Daniel Stern, um, Michael why, Nichols. I would love to really. know why Daniel Stern never made a second movie. So because it was solid. I mean, for somebody's first movie, it was his first movie and his only movie as director, mm -hmm. 1993, I believe. <laughs> you don't believe, you know. <laughs> I know that shit. <laughs> <laughs> I've been I've been researching. Um, no, I wonder why. I also wonder why everybody thought it was cool to just like trade a child, like because he is a child. Well, you know? I think. I think they. I don't know. I mean, oh shit! Here's another piece of research we got to figure out. Uh -oh. We don't. We don't know who wrote this bad mama jamma, and okay. so. Um, but it, it would. It would seem to me that rather than his arm just sort of relaxing again, or or him tripping on the ball and and knocking his shit back into place, it seemed like they needed some kind of like extra layer of uh, villainy, like a. a, a a filthy crust of evil because jack bradfield wasn't enough fucking jack bradfield man i've known some i've known some jack bradfields in my day all right who wrote rookie of the year sam harper sam harper what else did he write <sighs> that's a really great question i don't know and well, the click internet on his is name. having a hard time oh psh, edelson click on um, his name so he's written cheaper clear. by the dozen Oh shit! Just married, cheaper by the dozen too. <laughs> House broken. Um, Rio open season. Um, Ice Age. And that. How looks, old is this guy? It's, it's kind of. He is. Um, he's not as old as Jack Bradfield. Well, uh, just, it looks like he is in his fifties, I believe. Well, you know what's you know what's weird to me is it's sort of charming and uh, in a in a sort of harmlessly idiosyncratic kind of way. If somebody writes a bunch of kids books, mm. but you telling me that he wrote a bunch of kids movies, I'm just like, whoa, whoa, what is this? What is this guy's problem? Why does he want to keep writing kids movies? You know, he wears you sunglasses. Gr you gotta grow, man. No, I'm just kidding. and he has a cleft in his chin he looks like a handsome man says so the internet has given us two pictures <laughs> and uh we're sure that that must be him although one is definitely not the same picture um but uh this fellow looks looks pretty uh pointy he looks happy <laughs> he, he probably lives a very very comfortable lifestyle i believe that i believe that it very rio very is good i would say that rio is probably my favorite uh, jam out of all the ones you listed interesting well, well i, I kind of like anything that uh what's his butt the 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 larger half of flight of the concords is in jermaine <laughs> Oh, interesting. That makes sense. Um, he was he was also my favorite part of Moana. I never saw Moana. What? But we can't add it to our list. Oh yeah, because I made up some rules. Katie pointed out that I like to make up rules. <laughs> yeah. So we decided, as I'm sure every person with their friend or anybody has always been like, "Oh my God, you haven't seen this movie? We totally have to watch it the next time we're together." And then the next time you're together, you completely fucking forget until you know one day you're like, "Shit, we were supposed to watch 18 movies." So Charlie and I decided to make a list, and uh, that list turned into a lot of the <laughs> Marvel universe <laughs> and all, all the MCU is on. And there. then Charlie was like, "Oh, well, we can't add anything new until we knock out five, five. films on this list." <laughs> Um, I, almost, I almost said 15 before I... Said my it. contribution <laughs> to the list should be noted as uh, Dirty, Dirty Dancing, Dance, uh, True Virgin, Beverly Hills, Virgin, suicide. Virgin Suicides, Reality Bites. Yeah. Um, or 
the MCU. <laughs> or just every MCU. All of them. Do you know what MCU stands for? Marvel Comic Universe. Close. It stands for MC Universe in the place to be. <laughs> no. <laughs> it stands for Marvel Cinematic Get Universe. It. Get it. <laughs> That's us high-fiving each other because we're just, you know, killing we're, it with each other. <laughs> we're clapping them hands. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Hang on, give, give it to me. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> All right. Looks like it's time for a word from our sponsors. Lola, what you got for us? Buy blindworm guitars. <laughs> blindworm guitars. Where could I find a blindworm guitar? You can find blindworm guitars at I believe it's 1018 West Colorado Avenue in Colorado Springs, Colorado. You may also check them out on the YouTube's I think Think at youtube.com backslash blindworm or blindworm guitar. Or you know what? Nobody does that shit. Just type in blindworm into YouTube and the shit pops H-T-T-P. up. HTTP. <laughs> HTTP back, uh, backslash. Colon, no, no, no. HTTP colon backslash backslash www. Versus you just look at your computer now and go porn. Give it to me now. So we do love blind worm guitars and we appreciate them. Uh, I'm also wondering if I wanted my child to get or myself wanted some music lessons, where might I look into that? Uh, I can give um, swear free and porn free or porn reference free music lessons. What if you want a swear full and porn full music lesson? Do I, you offer those as well? I, I do offer a swear full lesson, but not a porn full lesson, but a porn referenced full lesson. That would actually be hard. You know, that would be really, really hard to do to make. How hard would it be? Ooh, oh, almost as hard as learning bass. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I appreciate that. I appreciate that you're a man with integrity who has boundaries. I will not curse in front of your kid if you <laughs> if you hire me for lessons. Perfect. I have to, I have to admit though, like if we're just shooting the breeze, like I I love teaching lessons, but it's it's difficult like it's di like when you get because i've had i've had the privilege to work with a, a few youngsters who really sort of had the gift if that makes sense and mm -hmm. and so you can really sort of ride their momentum of uh learning and you kind of get excited about the instrument and, again and stuff like that but when you're teaching a lesson to somebody who has just no fucking interest it's the hardest thing like i've yeah I've, i mean i've I've never like just completely like stopped going to a sure. lesson but more and more recently i've had to you know call people's parents and be like hey listen this just isn't working out for me you know and, and unfortunately that's led to fewer and fewer lessons but the lessons that i do have are uh, more serious and fulfilling and rewarding for i think both the student and i See, that's how I talk when I give lessons rather than like, fuck, shit, dicks, dicks, you know? <laughs> so I prefer when my bass lesson comes around because I do. I am learning the bass. You're doing I like great the job. shit, fuck, dicks uh, <laughs> style of learning. However, that's my personal preference. But, you know, it she is. She consents to the dicks, <laughs> the dick style of learning. Double, double consent. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I mean, it is, it is interesting to think about obviously as a child who was forced to do lessons that I didn't want to do part of it was that it made me anxious right when my mom was like you're gonna learn piano because being a singer means you're stupid so you have to learn piano <laughs> so you can read music and it just made me anxious and then I couldn't quite read play and understand all the things at the same time I just needed to go a little bit slower mm -hmm. and so I totally procrastinated practicing because I just was anxious and so obviously from an adult perspective you're like these kids didn't do their shit and so what am I supposed to do but from a kid's perspective it's like either either you have the drive to make it happen or like it's just not there yet well i understand the anxiousness well, i totally understand yeah. the nervousness of you know i mean i'm i'm scary <laughs> you know <laughs> like i you know i've got well you're an adult and uh, you kind of look like a man bear you know I've, I've, I've got dark circles under my eyes and shit but um you know i so i, I i've 
I've definitely talked a few kids like down off of the the nervousness ladder, you know, just like hey, you know. But what I'm what I'm more talking about is the kids who like think it's funny to sit there and fucking jack off <laughs> or not not jack off, but jack around with with my time, you know, like and like I remember one kid and obviously I'm not going to drop his name or anything like that, but he just he wanted to play hockey. And unfortunately, hockey is just not year round. And so his parents wanted him to do something when he wasn't like hockey. in hockey. And so he picked music. And so they asked him, do you want to play guitar or the bass or the drums? And he said the bass because it seems like the easiest. <laughs> and, so, <laughs> and so he, which I mean, I get that. Like I get why somebody would draw that conclusion. It's and, so not. And it's so hard as shit. <laughs> and so when you got me like in there like you gotta do it you're gonna come on rock you're a bum rock you know <laughs> we're like peanut butter peanut butter Pe peanut butter peanut pineapple, butter pineapple pineapple right. pine peanut butter peanut butter peanut butter pineapple pine you know just all that kind of stuff right and people are like i don't know like yeah music well, is music is the great uh the great equalizer you know there's there's nothing uh, racist or sexist about uh, not being able to play music very well. <laughs> or not wanting to. I right. think there's that too, right? So well, everybody everybody thinks they want to. Well, but there's a difference between wanting to be a rock star and practicing for six hours a day and like wanting to because you're like, I gotta, I gotta get this lick. I gotta get my fingers in the right position and, you know, all those kinds of things because... You know, as we've as we've learned all too recently, um, sort of the entitlement that has swept a bunch of these young whippersnappers mm -hmm. is real, even when it comes to work. Mm -hmm. So, like, I don't want to have to work. I just want to be successful in whatever it is. So, like, I don't really want to practice my instrument. I just want to play Red Rocks. It's right. like, well... Okay, well, talent I, takes you so far, but you gotta work, kid. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I I have to admit, I've I I've definitely heard you know heard people playing at Red Rocks who have not practiced their instrument every day. You know, like just the uh, the DJ culture. You know, that kind of goes back to what it's a double edged sword because it goes back to what we were talking about about with uh, with Mike being able to pull up. Uh, no, chew into the microphone. Get some of that ASMR going. Mm jalapeno cheese fries spicy mouthfeel cheese fries is like a blanket and jalapeno is like a tooth <laughs> in the middle of the blanket <laughs> <laughs> like, a, like a spicy tooth <laughs> so no but it so on the one hand it's like with the three of us we can now do things that it that or originally it would take like six people you know to do stuff right. like that you can but, have a horn section you can have you know exactly but all sorts of percussion but there's also the the producer culture which right. is you know what i mean the if it weren't if it were if it were hard to do <laughs> like you wouldn't see everybody like the big joke is that everybody's a dj you know what i mean right well but not everybody's a good dj right Right, like everybody could. You don't want to be the Jack Bradfield of DJs. Ugh. Oh my God, DJ Jack Bradfield. <laughs> meow meow meow. That should be your name, your DJ name when Jack you start. Jack Bradfield, DJing. you know, he just he ties so many things together for us. If you haven't uh, heard of Jack Bradfield, do yourself a favor. Check out Rookie check out of the Rookie year. of the Year. <laughs> um, Daniel Stern, nineteen ninety three, written by <laughs> Sam Harper. Yeah. Um, no, you're totally right, and it. I think it is a mixed. A mixed bag whenever I mean that's the whole thing about technology in general right it's with with the, the progress also comes some like huge fucking scary realities so like what if we can make all these sounds on a computer well then like what about the humans who make the sounds right mm. obviously nothing will compare to a human being playing an instrument live like that's just not it's never going to compare. However, it doesn't mean you can't create different types of sound and soundscapes. Well, um, and also it's like fun and weird and crunchy. And so it's like, if you don't take it so seriously, you know, it's, it's painting, it's painting with sounds. Well, Eric, one time, my, my, 
buddy Eric Blackmore told me. Um, Shout out to Eric. Woo, woo. He was like, well, if you think about it, because I was complaining about laptop, you know, strictly laptop musicians and stuff. And, I, and I've definitely, I've definitely loosened up on on that side of my thinking, but um, it really bothered me for a long time. But uh, Eric was like, well, if you think about it, if you want to make music, learning the guitar has got to be now the single most longest route to making music. You know what I mean? Versus being like, I'm just going to buy the song software and just start putting my song together. Versus being like, I'm going to learn music because you have to learn no music. music. You, right. Or, or I, have to, I have to learn how to like physically produce like touch the instrument make the sound right you know have the you know all that stuff well that also was real mm -hmm. at a time when like you know the only way you were going to get a loop of a guitar sound was to, to record play yourself yeah. playing a guitar mm -hmm. you know you couldn't just be like oh i don't play instruments but i have a computer right and i can press these buttons it's like oh, no I'm i have a producer. to play the instruments yeah, like, i'm a producer i'm a producer oh my well God. You know, it's funny because... What you, are you producing other than gas? You talked about uh, the the humans behind the production and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And, like, I saw Adam Deitch promote... Yeah, he's the drummer from for Lettuce. Mm -hmm. And he was promoting a DJ set. Or, no, it was a... It was specifically called a producer set. Like, okay. after... Like, at, a, at an after party or something like that. And... Um, he was talking about, yo, I poured hours into this set, so come, you know, d dance and check it out and stuff. And that that is intriguing to me. You know what I mean? Like Adam Deitch, the drummer from Lettuce, is going to show you some of the electronic music he's worked on in like a smaller club right. setting. Well, sure. Also, the sort of um, another thing that that would get me kind of ex excited to go see a production set or a dj set is those sort of celebrity dj sets remember paris hilton was like a dj for a while oh yeah i think she still is <laughs> right on but like i feel as though and but I'm, I, I'm i know i acknowledge that i'm fucking retarded and weird about this shit but i feel like i would rather go see dj snoopadelic than snoop dog do you know what that is tell me well it's just dj it's snoop, snoop but, he DJs, but he djs and like and every once in a while, well, I mean, he smokes blunts the whole time. And every once in a while, he will like play one of his tracks and like pick up the mic and like rap along with it. But it's more him just being like, oh, yeah, this song, then this song, then this song, you know? Yeah, I would love to go see him do Actually, that. Actually, DJ Snoopadelic, he, uh, you know, those boiler rooms mm -hmm. that we like to watch? Yeah. Um, he's got a boiler room and it's he and thundercat did the same thing because thundercat did a boiler room but it was the live band okay and they both did it in the, in the middle of a skating rink which is something i want to do at uh, skate city over here but uh but yeah i always thought that would be fun to like play some old school barbecue style jams while people are skating around or rollerblading around and stuff like that that's awesome yeah and he's got a he's got a soundcloud so we can and he puts out these like two and a half hour long mixes and stuff like that but okay curious some of them are mixed like some of the songs like blend right into the other and then some of them are just like this song you know who is the worst dj i've ever seen live who's that talib quelly <laughs> he uh we were supposed to um me and my friend doug aka flow ethic we're supposed to perform at sonic bloom in 2015 we were going to do the silent first of all we were going to do a sunrise set and then that got knocked down to a silent disco set and then i from what i heard from doug all the silent disco sets got uh nicked because um people were like they with they a they were having a hard time with the the AM FM fucking whatever's okay. and then people were stealing the headsets nice. themselves. So nice. we didn't we didn't get to perform but we got to like go in the all the areas and stuff like that. And uh I remember we watched Talib Quelly he was going to perform with a live band but I remember he got on the microphone and was like What's up, y'all? My DJ's plane was late, so I'm a DJ now. And so it was just like no segues, no like tempo matching or whatever. He would play like 
a minute of one old school hip hop song and then just like cut right to another. And he was like cutting with like, you know, he was scratching and stuff and it just was, I don't know. It probably was in his contract. You know what I mean? That it was, he was like trying his best or, or not trying very hard at all. Yeah. Know? Because he didn't really have to, but he was hyping up the crowd. And I think that's what his DJ was, was intend was intending to do. Or that's what he was intending to do with the DJ was, like, yeah, you remember the Beastie Boys? You remember Busta Rhymes? Remember Tupac and Biggie? And, you know, and then, of course, you remember Talib Kweli, you know. And um, his band was fucking killer. Each one took a, a solo on their on their instrument, and it, and it was just uh, drums, bass, and keys, you mm. know. And so, but you you see that more often than you, than you think, and I guess just, I don't know. Sometimes I, 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 uh, the the bane of my existence is that the right way to say it the yes. bane of my existence is this whole like oh piano based drums you guys are jazz that's why we added skylar in the first place you know he was already hanging around in barely garcia sure and i was having lunch with or brunch with james from barely garcia and he said something about oh you guys do more like jazzy shit though and so i just like added skylar and i th i think it did what what it needed to for a while and then it just sort of became like something different something different where like mm -hmm. we we had all but halted learning new songs and I, and i was sort of like teaching skylar note for note how to like learn the the newer songs and shit like that and it was just like slow fucking goings yeah thank god he's a gigantic asshole and he blew it for himself in like a, a monumental proportion you know that we'll talk about at some other point in time I indeed think. i was gonna say that was a pretty kind way to characterize but i think you know it's true and also the idea of jazz or like jazz being like a bad word it's like it's interesting but i understand from a musician's point of view like jazz is a very specific genre well i didn't used to think so like i actually started out my in, we'll, we'll call it my independent musical career independent from like the conservatory because i could have just kept going like sort of parallel like some of my peers you know became like teachers at the conservatory they went on to sure. college for music and all that stuff and i just knew that i wanted to like make my own music and perform it in front of people at a young enough age and they facilitated that to kind of happen but i started out wanting to be more of like a like a charlie hunter maybe straight up instrumental mm -hmm. you know that kind of and i kept calling it jazz and so i was sort of getting flack from the straight up jazz musicians who were like oh it's not really jazz and then the rock and roll musicians were calling it jazz and not taking it seriously mm. and so i just was kind of like but everybody knew that i was like like sort of practicing and working hard at getting better at bass and so that's what like people knew about me right they versus didn't, like it what didn't really kind matter of what music, kind of music yeah. you were playing which is really really fucking frustrating because it's like if you know that some if, if all you have to say is like oh tell him i know i've heard that he's good at bass then it removes the need to go check somebody out that's true, but you are definitely worth checking out, my friend. Mm, so are you. In all of the ways. And also, I don't even know if there's a word right now for the music you guys are creating. Like, I feel like you're creating, in some ways, your own I would genre. Like, it's jam. I would still call it jam it's band. It's jammy. It's jelly. It's, I don't know, it's sort of like... It's like raspberry preserves. I guess I, I would like to think of us as a, like, I don't know if this term exists, but like a piano jam band sort of like imagine i don't know imagine if the grateful dead had a piano a bass and a drums and so there's that sort of palette you know what i right. mean sort of like songs like i guess i would call them like pop rock songs with a piano or you know funk or whatever but piano being like sort of the main starting point mm -hmm. and then from there we can go into like organy modesky martin and wood kind of stuff we can go into live uh improvised dance tronic or live tronica which the new deal and sts9 and stuff like that do okay basically so my like my the the vision you know is like a song starts out and maybe it sounds like 
like what if what if Ben Folds was was a little bit was playing a little bit more like funky or progressive jam band kind of stuff or what okay. if or like Weezer with a piano or okay. you know you know just stuff like that I like that and then in the middle it's like hits this sort of New Deal disco biscuitsy you know craft work Armin Van Buren <laughs> you know Paul Oakenfold um, and it's fun for me because I've always loved those different genres of dance music mm -hmm. and so i think mike is starting to learn to associate different tones with different like genres or whatever but i'm totally i'm getting a kick out of just sort of being like oh this is a this is a, a trance <clears throat> this is kind of like a trance jam right now or oh this is a little bit more like funky house or you know mm. classic funk house that kind of thing um but I'd really like to start doing some like dubstep and drum and bass and stuff like that. I'm so into it. There was a little bit of reggae happening last night. Yeah. And uh, I was definitely here for it. The only thing that that reggae jam was missing was sort of the blip, 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 blip. This is why we need to start recording everything and putting it on, on the live streaming it on the interwebs and stuff so that people can reference what we're talking about. I was going to say, about. so now you could listen to the podcast and reference well the one thing i want to do with the podcast <laughs> is uh so john gut guilt wig gut wig or whatever his last name is they call him the barber for the disco biscuits he's the guitar player he started a podcast called touchdowns all day and he kind of talks a little bit about you know stuff and things and then he does these like jam analyses where he'll play a disco mm. biscuits jam and then he'll kind of like talk through what's happening and so that's that's an idea i'd love to rip off look at these two right here i know there are <laughs> <laughs> i think it's getting to be near the end of the podcast because we have two dogs who are literally cuddling each other um to try and get our attention we gotta we gotta riff for four more minutes I and then we can that. call it done <laughs> oh my gosh um well i think it's fair to say um or tell us a little bit about what what projects what do you have coming up in the next four minutes, tell me. Go. Um, we're definitely going to finish watching Mr. Show. Oh, yes, we are. And then after that, we're going to tackle 30 Rock um, because I hate having more than one television series going at once. Meanwhile, I'm like, I watched three episodes of this. I'm bored. Let me watch something else. We also watched the season premiere of Rick and Morty. That was... Uh, we did. It was, you know, it was good. We I, haven't I liked discussed it. it. I think we're going to need to rewatch it. And talk about it again. I liked it. I don't want to give anything away because I know not a lot of people have seen it. Um, but, you know, it's it's the boys that we love. It's not the same as the season three opener, which was just fucking stellar. But, you know, that's not... Not everything can be lightning in a bottle. I Is love, that the right phrase? I loved when he uh what did he shot that beam into the guys that like cracked their DNA or something like that. Did you, oh, you remember? Yeah. yeah, that was crazy. And they melted. And they melted and then at one yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of cool cool science like things that happened in Rick and Morty. That is true. Lots of cool stuff. What'd you think about that Rick and Morty climbing up the mountain? What's up, pretty Pretty good, actually. All right, three and a half more minutes. <laughs> I think the internet might forgive us if, uh, you know. No, it's a content thing. You're a content <laughs> thing. People want to people want to see the the fucking hour after hour after hour, and eventually, if we get good at it, we can sit here and talk for like you know two or three hours and get paid for it That'd oh my be... god can you wait are you so excited listeners <laughs> all i know in this all in, of you in this interesting are you amazed so no, yeah I... so coming up we have personal goals of finishing these shows and things and then also um the album. charlie milo band will be putting out a new album music video however first there is a music video for skeleton skeleton that will come out soon um it is shot we have a few reshoots to do um because you know 
that These whole fucking assholes will be assholes. That whole not having the fourth member thing anymore, um, unexpectedly. <laughs> he was a member. <laughs> he was a small member. Oh shit! Oh my god! Oh my god! Um, meow meow meow! Don't sue me. Um, <laughs> wow. she said to nobody. Um, yeah, no, I, I'm really excited, and the footage that we have from the video shoot so far is looking exceptional shout to johnny six yeah killing it um and so we will obviously be keeping you all posted um charlie what did you think of jack bradfield in rookie of the year he's the worst he really is the worst <laughs> he's the worst of the worst now did you think the worst is so do you think he started getting serious with the mom to get to the son or was that just coincidental that he had this mom and that she happened to have a child with a special talent? Well, he was already with his mom when he tripped on the baseball and, and uh, cracked his shoulder. Mm. So he just was, you know. A in, unique kind of predator. He was uh, he was into the mom for her personality. And then... <laughs> <laughs> and was then, he? And then the the son just had this this thing, and he was like, "I'm gonna call the Cubs and make a fortune." I mean, did you ever know Jack Bradfield to date a woman for her personality? I mean, really? I think she had a pretty killer personality, don't you? I liked her. I'm just saying. Do you really think that Jack Bradfield is the kind of man that digs digs a little deeper? Um, I don't know. Are you are you trying to get me to say that? Um, Henry Rowan Gardner's mom was a, a MILF? You, no, I'm trying to say that Jack Bradfield has no integrity or standards. Integrity. <laughs> integrity. Um, um, meanwhile, so I don't actually know that... If he has no standards, the, then is he, could he just be dating any woman because she's given him the time of day? I don't know. It's I, hard to really know what goes on in the mind of somebody like Jack Bradfield. Ms. Rowan Gardner is not a bad looking woman, but I definitely don't think that she had that like va va voom that a Jack Bradfield type would go for. So there's there's something else going on rather than just blonde. You know, I flowing, really flowing white shirts. I appreciate that analysis. Uh, that seems fair. Analysis. <laughs> you thought, <laughs> and you thought regularisis was bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you always for letting me be a part of your podcast. I enjoy it immensely, and I enjoy you immensely. I enjoy you too, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Send us some questions. Uh, yes, and we will answer. Where did them. we say that, to send them? You can send them to Charlie Milo on Instagram. Or Facebook, you can also send them to. Oh yeah, Facebook the the Charlie Milo program page. Duh. Where else can you send them? Lola Milo Facebook. Oh yeah, you you started a Weaving Roots Facebook too. That's true. I did. Not yet. But, well, I actually don't have a Weaving Roots Facebook. But you started an Instagram. But I do have a Weaving Roots Instagram. And you didn't want me to talk about that. You can. I just don't want. You send questions about the podcast there See because the, oh, no, no, you're this, not going to get is, any this questions. Is not, this is not related, but oh, con word up. Congrats, so separate. congrats on Thank your you. Weaving Roots Thank Facebook you so and much. Instagram. That's all I was trying to say. I appreciate that very much. I was you, just saying. You dick. <laughs> you cack. <laughs> it's like, ain't nobody going to answer that shit. It's like, um, what? That has nothing to do with sex or relationships. It's like... <laughs> it's like Dear the program, how do you beat Sonic the Hedgehog 2? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, is this a metaphorical Sonic? Or is, do you call your ball like, Sonic? <laughs> Put your dick in it. No. <laughs> I mean, as long as everybody's an adult and consenting. But with that, I bid you adieu. We will I have do. guests. Event. We'll, we'll get the guests back too. We also will. We, we just, just needed a little touchdown back with you, our friends, and just us charlie katie and the dogs you got something in your teeth all right talk to you later